Hey everyone, I just wanted to make a quick plug here before we get into this week's show. Uh, as you know, the Giles and the Goalie podcast is part of a website called Zone Coverage uh, to help support uh, not only Ben and myself, but all the other great writers and podcasts we have on this network. Uh, Zone Coverage has launched a subscription program. Right, you can go to zonecoverage.com slash subscriptions uh, to find uh, how to help support us there. A uh, couple bucks a month, or you can pay a, a yearly rate. I think it's like 23 bucks. Uh, would definitely help us out if uh, some of our listeners could uh, do that and help us out. Would definitely fund some projects for Ben and myself down the line. Uh, so, yeah, again, go to zonecoverage.com uh, and find the subscription link in there uh, and just help us out if you can. That'd be great. Uh, but if, hey, money is tight, I get that these days. Uh, so, there are other ways you can help support this show. You can go to iTunes if you listen. Uh, to podcast via iTunes, uh, leave us a rating, subscribe to us, subscriptions and ratings on iTunes, help support the show, boost it up in the lovely iTunes algorithm. Uh, we also are on SoundCloud, uh, subscribe to us there, uh, we have a YouTube channel, subscribe to us there, search Giles and the Goalie. Uh, the best way to help us out though is by telling a friend, uh, you know, we all have friends who are wild fans, so... If you love this show and you have a friend who is a Wild fan and might dig what we offer on a weekly basis, tell them about us. Tell them how they can subscribe. Uh, that would definitely go a long way to supporting this podcast. And again, go to zonecoverage.com and uh, if you can help us out financially, that would be ever so kind. So with that said, we will get to this week's show. The Zone Coverage Podcast Network. They may be drinkers, Robin, but they're also human beings. Hell yeah, let's get stinko. Podcast, uh, the podcast where prostate exams are reminded on the weekly. <laughs> I am your host, Giles Farrell. Uh, as always, joining me is Ben Remington. Hello. Ben, I gotta be honest. I don't know why we're here talking. There was another horrible news week for the Minnesota <laughs> Wild. Yeah, I uh, I don't know what we're going to talk about either, but I mean, at least this time, hopefully it won't be quite as off the rails as last week. Yeah, I mean, we could just let them uh, take this one again, no, give us no, the week no, off. No, I no, don't, I don't think we need to do that. I mean, <laughs> if we let them take the wheel with uh, less uh, beverages consumed before, it, it might be a different story. Uh, it's a toss-up for me. Mm. All right. Well, <laughs> food for thought for down the line, I guess. But right. Also, weird before we dive into what we have for you on this podcast, I'm currently watching the Washington Capitals play in round three. What a time to be alive. Yes. Not since the days of Olaf Kolzig. Not since the days of the Fighting Eagle. Yep. I don't show a lot of emotion in <laughs> sports anymore. Like, I just, I don't know if... You're dead inside. It's just a combination of, like, or I don't, I guess it's more of maybe just because I try to, like, write about hockey objectively or Minnesota sports has just made me dead, but... Yep. When Kuznetsov scored the winner in overtime to defeat the Penguins, I not only jumped off the couch, I did a sprint around the house. Wow. Did you have some kind of celebratory trophy that you sprinted around the house with? 
a no. Oh, that would have been better. Well, I mean, I could have just raised up a bottle of whiskey or something. and. Oh, there you go. But uh, I'd much rather just, you know, consume said bottle of whiskey. <laughs> right. Understandable. No, it's it's been fun, and uh, we had a we had a debate here uh, about is it all right to have a backup team in the playoffs? As uh, the lady tried to point out, it's almost cheating on your your first team. But that that's that's the fun part, though, right? <laughs> I'm gonna I only say that because I know she's listening. I'm gonna decline um, to comment here. <laughs> uh, okay uh, Ben covering the news of the week for the Minnesota Wild there there was was there any was there a single shred of news this week well I left that spot silent because I'm going to just yeah. put crickets in there oh okay that's good that's a good move um, well I mean they did say that they're doing second round of interviews for Fenton and Fitzgerald, and I believe that's it, correct? Or correct. Were there more names possible, or was it just those two? I believe uh, it is just those two. That's I've... how it sounded to me, too. But they said they weren't 100% on that, obviously. I don't, who knows what kind of wonky no. uh, shenanigans those front office folks type to, like to pull. But um, So it sounds like it's down to those two chaps, and... We should see something announced this week, like probably tomorrow morning when everyone's listening to this podcast. Oh. Uh, the, the interviewees coming back, of course, Paul Fenn, the assistant general manager of the Nashville Predators, discussed him uh, at length previously on this show, and then Tom Fitzgerald, assistant general manager, New Jersey Devils, who pretty much uh, sounds like he came in and just absolutely floored uh, the Minnesota Wild Brass uh, earning a second interview, uh, which uh, kind of makes him uh, a dark horse here, I guess. I don't know if you can label him a dark horse in a in a two horse race, but I man, I don't know. Like with just how it's been reported, at you know, for as good as he interviewed, I don't know. Maybe I'm just reading too much into it, but I could see it going either way, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it. you know, we've been told Fenton was the guy kind of almost from the get-go, um, but it would be very interesting if Fitzgerald managed to kind of uh, weasel his way in there almost. Um, you know, it, it, it uh, I don't know, it, it'd be interesting. It, it, it almost would feel like Fenton lost the job, like it was kind of his to lose. And somehow or another, he lost it. That's how I would, would kind of yeah. see it a little bit. But I don't know. I mean, maybe Fitzgerald is just that guy. I mean, he's he certainly has you know the, uh, a decent resume. Worked as player per, player development with the Penguins. Um, he's now with the Devils, as they've kind of completely 180 that franchise. Uh, certainly, you know, certainly some stuff that that looks very good. So uh, I guess we'll find out. So yeah, that's something you can look forward to this week. Uh, really, that's that's it for wild news. And unless you really want to deep dive into the why is Nino Ninorider playing so good at the World Championships and he didn't play good in the playoffs, but I don't think we really want to do that. I, I think it, I mean just to touch on that very 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 briefly, it's a level of competition. I think right. I mean yeah, I tweeted that. Yeah, I mean that, that's there's no that's that's a very easy answer. Yeah, it's like, why is he having such a good World Championships? Well, look at the competition he's playing against. Right. You know, just you mean he couldn't score against the Jets, but he's scoring against Belarus. How does this happen? Yeah, I don't. I don't know of many household names on Belarus, so <laughs> right. Unless. Sidney Crosby secretly is from Belarus after all this time. <laughs> I doubt uh, it. I don't know, but people are just so bloodthirsty right now. It just. Uh-huh. 
it's I it's annoying. Mm -hmm. Like yawning. <laughs> I was kind of pressured into saying that, sorry. Uh-huh, I bet you were. Uh, all right. So what we have in store for you on this show is we're going to ever so briefly run down the Minnesota Wild roster, and we're going to hand out player grades. Uh, ben and I have done some homework before. We've handed out a letter grade to each player, uh, and we are going to do so now. Uh, like we said, we could sit here and go on forever on each player, but we're going to try to stick to you know, like a, a minute or less on, on each player. So we're going to try. There's an emphasis on try here. So bear with us. Uh, and I, I think we're just going to kind of go down the roster alphabetically. So with that said, we can start with uh, Jonas Brodin. Ben, how did you grade Jonas Brodin? Well, so we, we talked about this before. By the it's by the total season and not against expect or and also against expectations, correct? Right. So, do you want me to combine the two into one grade or two grades or uh, put it on the one? Okay. Uh, Jonas Brodin, I had as a C. Ooh. And that might be a little rough on him, um, but he got off to a pretty bad start, and I, I know he brought it back and he did play well down the stretch. Um, but I, I, I maybe I'm in, I'm probably in the minority, but I am just not enamored with Brodeen's game that much. I'm really not. Uh, I, I see him make a lot of mistakes that. I don't think a guy that's as good defensively as him should make. And by the same token, if he's that good defensively, you know, he, he needs to be better defensively to make up for the fact that he contributes absolutely zero on offense. That That's kind of my thoughts on Brodeen. He's, he's really the, the, the anti Matt Dumba in a lot of ways. Um, but I, I didn't, I wasn't wild about him this season. I mean, I, I didn't think he had a, Horrible season. I'm not putting him in the D to F range. Um, but I, I think he kind of, I don't know, I, I also think he fell a little bit short of expectations because he was a guy that was a very hot name last summer and and probably led to the expansion draft being handled the way it is, however you feel about that. Um, being protected over Matt Dumba, and there really doesn't, that, that really doesn't look like the smart move now. I mean, granted, it all turned out the way it turned out, but... Um, I mean, the, the, the expansion draft rolls around this summer, and do they protect Brodeen over Dunbar again? Absolutely not. So on, in, that, in that vein, I think he he fell short this year. Well, I was a little bit more generous than you. I gave him, <laughs> I gave him a B. Uh, he had that, had that rough start, like you said, and uh, but I thought he rebounded nicely. I thought he... Turned into a good, pretty good pair with Matt Dumba, and I thought he limited the mistakes, and you know he really kind of had to step into a a bigger role when Ryan Suter went down, and you know he's obviously not able to replace the offense Ryan Suter provides, but I, I thought I thought he did you know all right, so I I gave him a B because he is what he is, and I, I don't expect him to put up much offensively so I that's kind of where I'm at with him yeah I, I can see that like I said I, I was probably harsh but like I said I'm 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 fully aware that I'm probably the low man on Brodeen probably uh, all right uh, next up the big omelet Charlie Coyle <laughs> I was not uh, I was not kind I, you know I, I would give his year a D and that might, that might seem gem, generous to some. He he still, you know, ended up with I think it was thirty seven points, something like that, almost forty points. I mean, pretty pretty lackluster. But you know, so you might give him a C otherwise. But against expectations, I mean, this is this is a an F minus. You know, when it comes to measuring him up against what we thought he could be and and all that. I mean, he had fifty six points last year. We're, and we've always waited for him to take that next step. 
And instead, he took two steps back. You know, he had a 20-point, almost 20-point falloff from last season. And we were really kind of, you know, a lot of people were really kind of hoping for him to have a 20-point improvement, you know. I mean, we were looking at him to be maybe a 60-point kind of guy. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, a D and and that, that and it's a low D. I mean, it's a D minus, you know, with with a red angry face. I gave him an F. I, yeah, that's fair. Like you said, he took uh, some steps back and... Uh, given the wild lost a little bit depth wise at forward uh, over the off season, uh, I felt he needed to do very similar to what he put up last year in terms of points. But um, oh. Pooch. angry dog. <laughs> Perfect summary of Charlie Coyle. Yeah, wolf. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, Matt Cullen. Uh, you know, uh, I, I might not make some friends with this, but I gave Cullen a uh, D. Um, I know the expectations probably weren't super high, but I mean, he looked, he had a, he had a rough start as well. And I mean, he, he looked serviceable down the line and, and he did score some decent goals. I feel like this, the goals he did score, there were some, some decent ones, but um, I don't know. I just, I, I don't, uh, I wasn't enamored with his game at all this year either. Uh, obviously everyone loves the story. Everyone loves Matt Cullen as, as the lovable hometown guy. And I don't have any ill will towards him. I just was kind of left wanting a lot more than the wild got. I was a little more generous again. I gave him a C like, I, I think, yeah. You know, he was what he was, and, you know, at 41 years old, that to have high expectations for him was, you know, a little bit out there. So I I was expecting, you know, great things from a point production standpoint. I was hoping he could just kind of be a, you know, a solid presence in the lineup and then a, a decent presence in the in the room for some of these guys. And, you know, that we don't really know, but... So I I go with a C. I I don't know. I wasn't I wasn't enamored with his play, but I also wasn't like disappointed. So it was just okay. middle of the road. Sure. Uh, Devin Dubnik. Oh, um, Dubnik. I would probably has <laughs> this. There's no right answer to this one. Is this kind of the issue because you know, he had by all accounts a pretty mediocre season, um, but you know it was still a, a solid season and I don't know I, I would put him probably in the C range uh, maybe C plus at best uh he looked he did look good in the playoffs until game five which unfortunately for him just absolutely skewed his numbers into the horrific zone uh but he did look good in the first four games and um you know we just didn't get that season out of him that we kind of hoped for we we hoped for another strong season like he had last year uh, minus March, and we didn't really get that. And I think the injury in December might have had something to do with it, but uh, still just a very a very mediocre season, kind of all around. So I, I, I would give him a C. Again, I'm a little more generous than you are here. I I threw him a, a B+. Plus. I, oh, okay. Last year, I, I felt... He was Vesna caliber. That was until March when the swoon <laughs> occurred, um, and so right. I, I thought, you know, maybe he comes down a little bit from that this year, and he did. And but I just felt like he did what was needed of him to to get wins, and you know, there were no swoons this year, and you know, a lot of that is a, a credit to him. Um, because he never really had that nosedive kind of a month, uh, which have played part in other swoons. So right. I gave him a B plus and yeah, it's, you know, probably higher if you, you factor in the, the postseason here, because he was the best player for the wild in the playoffs, yeah. not even close. So, yeah, yeah. And, and it really sucks. Cause you look at, like I said, you look at the stats for the playoffs, 
and he looks awful. And uh, it was basically because of that fifth game where he just absolutely got shelled, and uh, it really kind of did a number on his stats for the for the series. Right. All right. We're probably going to ruffle some feathers with this one. Matt Dumba. <laughs> you know, we it shouldn't ruffle feathers. Matt Dumba had an A season, and I don't give a sh- what you think. Like it, I don't know how you don't grade him as an A this year. You know what I mean? Like a twenty-three-year-old scoring fifty points. I just, I, I don't know. I, I don't. I, I still am struggling to understand why people can't let go of wanting to see turnovers from him. I, I just don't get it. I got him an A minus. Um, that was mainly because of how he started the year. Yeah, that's fair. But. Yeah, I mean, he absolutely rebounded, and he had a very terrific season after that dreadful first, what was it, 12, 15 games? Yeah, it was like the first month, and that was it. And I felt he, you know, I wouldn't say he was great, but I felt like he did a a decent job when Ryan Suter went down, and he kind of took that de facto number one defenseman role. And yep. it was, you know, it was a small sample, but... You know, it, it it could have been a lot worse. So Yeah, for sure. Tyler Ennis. <laughs> uh I mean F, you know. Yeah. Easy pretty easy, That's F. An easy I, F. I mean just I don't think the expectations were super high for him, but whatever they were, he still failed to meet them. And, you know, when you find yourself a healthy scratch down the down the line in, in favor of, you know, anybody with a pulse, basically. Um, I mean, they, they can't buy him out fast enough. Yeah. I mean, I was pretty optimistic on him at the beginning of the year. A guy that cried out, fresh start, was needed. And, you know, at a $4.6 million cap hit, and he had a, he had a you know, history where, you know, if healthy, he could put up points and, yeah, he never really got settled in here, and he straight up lost the confidence of Bruce Boudreau quickly. And oh yeah, it's hard not to see him being bought out. So oh yeah, like yeah. if he were, and the thing is the cap hit, obviously, like that's why he's going to get bought out. Would I mind keeping him around as a thirteenth, you know, twelfth, thirteenth forward, or thirteenth forward? I should say. I mean, you yeah. could find worse guys to sub in, but. Not for four point six million dollars. I mean, if he's making minimum, you know, I guess I consider it. But no freaking chance at that at that price. No, no. Uh, Jewel Erickson Eck. Uh, this. I mean, it's a D for me, but it, 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 it I begrudgingly say that because I, I think it's a D plus. I, I think he showed some things and, and that D might be a little more harsh than how I feel about him. But at the end of the day, I mean, he just really couldn't get anything going. And, um, you know, there just really wasn't any production there. And I really liked what I've seen out of him and, and, you know, in the, doing the little things, you like what you see out of him in board battles. You like what you see out of him moving the puck sometimes, but there just wasn't enough of it. And there just wasn't nearly enough production. Yeah. I mean, even for a first-year guy. I gave him a C. I You didn't know what to expect of him this year. I mean, this was his first full season, and, you know, some guys do really well, some guys do not. And he never really got up off the fourth line, and, you know, for a decent part of the year, he was kind of anchored down by who he was playing with. I mean, Chris Stewart was a common line mate, and... That's true. So, and at the end of the year, you know, him and Winnick and Marcus Foligno, they were they were a decent fourth line. So, yeah, I kind of played that in there, and yeah, they looked pretty good. And so I I went with a C, and I, I'm a optimistic about his play next year. Um, yeah, but I mean, if you're just gonna sit there and compare him to Brock Besser for days on end, then 
No, you're probably never going to, you know, do well with him. No. No, and, there, and there's no use being upset about it now. I mean, Chuck Fletcher's gone. So any complaint about the whole Eric Sinek versus Besser thing is just, you know, just crying. I mean, it's just, you know, crying over spilt milk. So right. we just need to hope for a little bit better out of him next year. And, you know, in the end, if he becomes a, you know, a, a decent third line center with, with, with some good defense, uh, there's worse things to spend a first round pick on. Marcus Foligno. Yes. Uh, I, I'm going to be a little bit nice here and I'm going to give him a C minus, uh, just basically at the urging of folks like you and Tony from hockey wilderness. Um, because I am a noted Felino hater, but I will grant, I will grant you that he had basically the season that you would expect. Um, Certainly didn't give us more than than was expected, but I think he had he did what was asked of him, and and I think he kind of was what he was. So I'm going to give him a C. I, I again, I hoped for more. I I hoped that him and Ennis would respond to the change of scenery, but neither one of them did. And but at least Felino did what was expected. I gave him a B minus. Oh Jesus Christ, Giles. I, I think <laughs> for the role that he plays, he he did his job. And I think what really factors into everyone's opinion is his contract, which was a lot. The attic. Yeah. So, and like I said, with Jewel Erickson, him... Felino and Winnick, they formed a pretty good fourth line late in the year. So it, he's not as bad as everyone thinks. And I think just kind of what you expect from him, he he did a good job. So I'm, I don't like his contract, but you could do a lot worse. So uh, there you go. All right. Uh, Mikhail Granlund. Uh, Granlin, I'll go with, uh, I would go with like a, a B plus. Um, probably more of like an A minus, I guess. Let's go with A minus. Um, I think he met expectations. Absolutely. I, th- I think that he did, you know, I think that the big question for him going into this year is, can he do it again? And he did. So I think that's, that's huge. I mean, that's huge in his development. That's huge considering how disappointing he was for seasons before that. Um, you know, so I think he had a solid season. Uh, he's a guy that, you know, much like Coyle, I, I think we would kind of maybe hope for, and I don't know that it's realistic, but we can hope for um, another step, you know, I mean, uh, 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 an upper, another echelon. Um, and obviously that didn't happen. So I think, I think an A minus is probably fair for him. Yeah. He got a A minus for me as well. So he, can't go wrong with what he did this year. So right, right. Uh, did I had Jordan Greenway written down? But he did he meet the minimum requirements we were kind of looking for? Or was no? It? He only played six games, I think. Oh, okay. Because yeah, I I had him kind of as a not applicable as well. But yeah, it's it's really tough to grade him. I I mean, you're a tad disappointed, I think, with his debut, but. At the same time, it's six games, so it's like uh, I don't know. I don't know how how disappointed you can be over such a tiny sample. All right. All right. So. All right, Miko Koivu. Uh, Miko, I gave um, a B minus. Wow. <laughs> I think he had a very Miko year. Um, certainly a step down from last year. Uh, probably he's probably more in the, in the C plus range if, if that's even generous, but, um, yeah, I mean, disappointing, but ultimately, you know, he was still kind of up towards the top of the wild point scorers. And I don't think that he was as bad as everyone thinks he was. I just don't think he was as good as everyone hoped he would be kind of thing. He gets a C minus from me. Oh, wow. Okay. 
he had a really good year last year. He gets a new two-year contract extension. Um, you know, still he was really good defensively, and this is why I gave him a C minus. I thought it could have been a lot worse. See, that's why I would give him a B minus, because I think he was still strong enough defensively. I, he he struggled this year, and it it showed. And you know, if Eric Stahl didn't have the the season that he had, I I think it would have probably opened a few more eyes to Koivu's offensive woes this year. So that's true. That's I, true. I was not that pleased with him, but. You know, he was still one of the best defensive forwards in hockey. Right. And he was a, a snub for the Selkie in my mind. So, sure. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit harsh on him, and it was probably more of expectations as well going in this year that played into that. So, yep. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, Luke Cunning. Oh, Cunning. I mean, that, that's kind of an incomplete, but, but I would give him a. Uh... I would give him a C plus. Um, there, he was kind of like Eric Snack, only a little bit more. There wasn't much production given the amount of time that he actually got up here. Uh, but at the same time, I, I liked what I saw to him in the limited window that we got. Um, and obviously the injury cut a season short. So it's not like he had a lot of time to, you know, he didn't have as much time to, to rack up the points as others, but. Um, his production was a little light, but I think that there is positives to build on for sure. Yeah, I gave him a C, and it was pretty sure. much everything you just said. So Yeah, yeah that's fair. Uh, Ryan Murphy. Uh, Murphy was, I, I would say, a C, C-minus-ish. Um, I think, again, he played all right for the time that he was up here. He he did what he was supposed to do. Um you know, there was a few folks that were higher on him when the Wild signed him last year and thought that he could, you know, be a solid addition and, and play in the NHL. I I really hoped that he would kind of take that third line job away from Nate Prosser. Um, but it just didn't really happen and that was a little disappointing. Like and I and I think that was warranted. I think his play didn't warrant him taking that job away from Nate Prosser, because as much as Nate Prosser is, you know, unflavored yogurt uh ryan murphy wasn't anything more impressive so i was i was disappointed by that yeah i gave him a d and yeah, he played really well in, in iowa before he got his first call up i think it was like in december mm-hmm. and then really after that he didn't have the most inspiring play in iowa and and then when he was with the wild it it wasn't that great after either so i right not that i factored the Iowa stint into his his grade, but it's just worth sure. pointing out here that that's kind of how his season went. So, I, yeah. I don't know. D, D for him, and yeah, move on. The good hockey boy, Nino Niederreiter. <laughs> uh, uh, painfully, I'm going to have to give him a C. Um, and, but... I mean, any grade you give Nino this season, anything you say about Nino's year this year comes has with to be an the asterisk. caveat that, yeah, it comes with an asterisk because the dude played with a broken freaking leg uh, for well over half the season. So I, I'm not ready to, you know, I know there's probably some people that want to move Nino, and I just think that that's, I just have more belief in his talent than that. I, I think that if you if you deal him now, you're selling low. Um. I mean, so unless the return is just phenomenal, I, I would I would refrain from that kind of thinking. Yeah, you got to see for me, and I obviously I think healthy he probably was going to have another really good year, but yeah. uh, playing on the the leg seemingly hampered him all year, and yeah, but it is good to see him you know, doing what he should be doing at the world championship. So that gives me optimism for next year that if healthy, he'll be able to kind of get back to the form that we, we know him at. So, uh, Gustav Olofsson. Oof. Exactly. 
<laughs> Should I get the dog to bark again? <laughs> um, I, I I gave him a D minus, but oh man, I, I mean, I yeah, that that might be generous. I mean, because I, I never really hated his game when he was playing. There was some some games where he looked awful, but there were some games where he looked all right. And uh, I don't know. I just we you know, and then he got hurt, and and it'd be interesting to see if that maybe affected things at all. But I mean, the, talk about a disappointment. You know, he was a guy that a lot of people had really high hopes for going into the season, and um, now I don't know that you'd get more than spare change for him uh, from any other NHL team. So uh, D minus, and that's probably uh, a hell of a lot higher than the grade you're going to give him. Yeah, that was a. Faster F that I wrote down than I gave to Tyler Ennis. <laughs> wow. I mean, savage. he was basically given the third pair job out of camp. Yeah. Uh, and he never really took it. And then the Wild traded Mike Riley in February. And, and then again, they were kind of saying, hey, here's your chance again. And by that point, he had really not impressed Bruce Boudreau and... He never got back into the lineup. So, yeah, what was expected of him this year, uh, he massively failed, and that is why he got the letter grade I gave him. Yeah, I, I, I might be a tad sympathetic towards him, just because he had to play with Kyle Quincy for a, you know roughly a quarter of the season, and that is a fate that you just don't wish upon any any defenseman because that undoubtedly made him look worse than he was. But I'm not disagreeing that he had a bad season. He had an absolute terrible season, but um, what kept him out of the F zone for me was the fact that he had to play with Kyle freak and Quincy. So Zach Parisi. This is a tough one. This is almost uh, an incomplete or an NA type thing, but I mean, I, I guess you go with a C because, uh, you know, he took a while to heat up once he did come back from injury. And then he did kind of light on fire. So, you know, it, it's tough because he only had about maybe a quarter of the season worth of production. But he did it in a half a season. So it's like, it's really hard to grade that because he was so slow out of the gate. Um, but then really picked it up in a huge way. So I, I ended up with a C. For the same reasons you just listed, I gave him a B plus. Okay. I, you know, obviously the the back surgery was a, a thing, but he came back mid season, and you know everyone knew that coming in mid season was going to be not good for a player to start their year, and so there was obviously kind of a a learning curve for him to get back into the play and. And then when he did, he was terrific. He was he had 10 goals in March. And as I pointed out, I think he was just the fourth player in the history of the Minnesota Wild to have 10 goals in one month. Right. And then he was probably their best forward in the playoffs. Oh, without a doubt. So, obviously not factoring in the playoffs, but I gave him a B plus and... He really looked good after coming off a major surgery, so I am, I have a little bit of optimism for him going into next year too. Sure, that's fair. Nate Prosser, <laughs> trust um, the Prosser. <laughs> I I mean I gave Prosser a C because it's like I realized that the expectations couldn't be much lower, but. I think that he at least met them, so there's that. I don't think there's a lot that you can say about Nate Prosser that's super negative, but I, at the same time, there's never anything you can say that's really positive either, so uh, it, I don't know. It's what it is. It's Nate Prosser. Yeah, C-plus for me. He, he did pretty much what was expected of him, but... You know, it, it's not, you know, he's not a world beater by any means, but, you know, whatever. If you factor in the fact that it allowed the Wild to fire Kyle Quincy into the sun, I will raise him a full letter grade. All right. All right. 
I knew that. <laughs> Nick Sealer. Uh, Sealer, I think was probably uh, Sealer. I, I would give a C plus, B minus, right on the verge there. Because I, I liked what I saw of him, and I think a lot of people really liked what they saw out of him. And that's fine, and that's great. But at the same time, I don't, I, I don't want people to get too excited about Nick Sealer. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want people to think that Nick Sealer is going to be like a left-handed Spurgeon or, or something to that effect. You know, he's he's not going to be. Like, I don't want him to be the reason why the Wild get rid of Brodeen because they think that he's good enough depth to to play those kind of minutes right now still or that he's good enough depth to replace Ryan Suter if he's injured or, you know. I like what I saw in him. And I, don't get me wrong. I'm very happy that he showed what he showed. But I, I think that collectively Wild fans might need to just pump the brakes just, just a tad on him. All right. Well... I gave him an A. Okay. <laughs> I thought he stepped in and he did incredible. And Okay. In, you know, watching him in Iowa, he you know, looked like he was ready to get an NHL call up and you know, usually for a, a guy of his skill set, you kind of thought, yeah, I'll probably get a, a couple games maybe but he'll probably struggle and need adjustment but he stepped in and he did incredible work and you know yeah I, I think you gotta you know kind of pump the brakes on the optimism for next year but looking at what he did this past year for the wild he did really good work considering you know he was an injury call up that you know, nobody right. really had any expectations for, and he kind of blew everyone away. So, okay, there you go. Well, so so then going to my point, then if the Wild do end up moving Brodeen, because that's a that's a decent contract to move, and it's a contract that I would like to move. But do you feel comfortable with Sealer being the second line left-handed defenseman? Lord, no. Okay, that's fair. I. I I, well, you need to see Nick Sealer play a, a full 82 game right. season before yep. I give any yep. kind of comfort zone to you know moving on from Jonas Brodeen. Yep, that's so. that's kind of what I'm. I mean, so I think we are on the same wavelength. We just kind of graded things, looking at it differently, I guess. Yeah. So weird. I don't know. That that, yeah. that could just be the alcohol talking. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Carson Susi, I think he gets a. NA because not enough games met, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, you know, you didn't love what you saw to him in, in the playoffs especially, but um, such a small sample, it's like, you know, there's it's, I'm, I'm not writing him off as a guy who's never going to be here again. Right. Jared Spurgeon. Oh, Spurge, I have at a B plus. Um I think Spurge had a great year, and he's obviously I think he's still still underrated. Um, even in this market, he's still somehow underrated. Um, so I, and I only kind of went with the B plus because I I keep wanting for him to take kind of a next step. Like I want him to get to that fifty point plateau. I, I think he's good enough to do that. So that's that's the only place where he so to speak fell short for me is just that he. I want him to take it to the next level, and he's he's just very good, and I, I want him to to be even greater. I gave him an A. Sure. I, I think it's an obligatory A. I, Jared <laughs> Spurgeon on the top pair on the right side is very, very good. And going into the year, I knew Jared Spurgeon was good, and yet many, many times this year I kept saying to myself, man, Jared Spurgeon is really good. <laughs> yeah. So he still somehow exceeds my expectations, and his loss was, you know, at times this year was noticeable. So very right. hard guy to replace. Yeah. Eric Stahl. Oh, God. I mean, how, how many pluses can you put on the A? I, um, I gave him four pluses. <laughs> that sounds about right. Or uh, yeah, do, how many? 
how many pluses next to the A before that A evolves into a C? See what I'm doing there? <laughs> That's I, I to feed the strip the C crowd. Yeah, you're feeding it. I was going to say you're feeding to a certain crowd out there, Giles. I don't know if you want to go down that rabbit hole. That could um, also be the alcohol. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. He's just as likely to be traded as he is to be the captain next year. But, wow. um, I, I mean, he is. It's equally likely, I feel like. Yeah. And the fact that um, it's not. Right. I mean, yeah, it, it, he was when – you, when you look back at this team this season, that he was the team. Um, you know, him and Granlund and Zucker and, you know, Suter Dumba, I mean, that, that line right there, that – that five guys and that is just about it you know Spurge had a nice year you know Prezi had a nice finish uh you know yada 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 but like Derek Stahl was the guy he was the guy this year yep I, there's I, no two ways about it I think something that's really lost in the tire fire that was the Minnesota Wild playoffs was how good Eric Stahl was this year. He didn't have a, a great five games in the playoffs, but no. what what a regular season. And oh, I just he just seems like such a good dude too. I I would love to keep him around, but after yeah, this that's contract be runs the million out, dollar question this summer uh, is that's some we'll get what, into later. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Al Stalock. <laughs> um, can I plead Fifth Amendment rights on this? Cause no, spit it out. I I have Fifth Amendment rights, Giles. No, spit it's it in, out. It's in the Bill of Rights. Alex Stalock was a uh, uh he, uh, he was a C for me. Okay. And I think that that's equal parts. I think if you grade his first half, you probably give him an A, A minus ish. I think if you grade his second half, it's a D. So, you know, maybe he's a C, maybe more towards a C plus, but certainly, uh, you know, did his, did his exact job in the first half, looked great. Uh, was the exact backup that the Wild needed, and that was awesome because they haven't had that, you know, since I mean, or they didn't have that last season, I should say. Kemper was that two years ago, but uh, this, but the second half was was pretty brutal, and you could tell that Boudreaux had kind of lost some faith in him. Dubnik got a lot more starts down the down the stretch, maybe than he should have, maybe a handful more than he should have, because um, that second half was was pretty rough from Stalock. So. Uh, you know, not, not bad enough to where I don't want to see him back next year. I think that he's a capable NHL backup, um, but I'm just going to go with a C. He gets a C- minus for me, and it's pretty much exactly for what you just said. His... Right. And I forget who was uh, on Hockey Wilderness. They're doing their player grades, and, you know, they said Alex Dalak kind of was big early on in the year for the Wild, which is absolutely true. Uh, but as you said, as the season went on, it was not good, and so he gets a C minus for me. Yeah, it was it was a pretty rough second half. I don't think a lot of people realize how bad it was. They're blinded by his birthplace, <laughs> by his bulldogginess. Ryan Suter. Uh, Suter, I'm gonna go. Uh, Suter, I'll go with an A. Um. I lean towards A minus. I guess I could say A minus because I think versus expectations, you know, maybe he didn't kill it. He had a great, great season. I mean, phenomenal season. And, and I'm not going to say anything to besmirch his season at all. But, you know, then the conversation turns to, well, he makes a lot of money. He should kind of be having seasons like that. I I can listen to that argument. So, that's why I'm going to say A minus, uh, even though I think his season was fantastic. Yeah, he got a A minus for me, and I only ding him because sometimes I just feel like his power play 
decisions yeah. are still questionable. And I know that's a that's low hanging fruit. And, yes. But man, just sometimes that drives me nuts. But as yes. you said, still a really good year, and he was going to hit a career high in points. And yeah, so it you, you couldn't have done a lot better this year than what he did. So yeah. Daniel Winnick. Um, Winnick, I'd, I'd go with a, I don't know, like a C, C minus. Um, you know, that that's a guy that there wasn't any expectations for going into the season. And we had kind of hoped he would shoehorn Chris Stewart out of the lineup. And, and luckily he did. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I think, yeah, C is fair. I mean, he just kind of there. He, he was on some lines that, that looked good at times, but he still didn't have a ton of uh, production to show for it. But I don't think you can be too upset about that. All right. I gave him a B minus. I, I think it took a little bit of time for him to kind of get adapted, but once he did, uh, I thought you know he, he did pretty well in in his role, and you know I would definitely love to see him come back next year on the the fourth line, but. You know, my optimism for him maybe coming back goes down with a new general manager. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Last one, Jason Zucker. Yeah. Yeah, That's that's a pretty easy A, right? Um, You know, the the thing for him is that he, you know, went in the season, you know, pending RFA, uh, and he killed it. You know, 33 goals, uh, you got to be really happy with that. He made himself a lot of money. And uh, so I think you got to be pretty happy with that. Uh, you know, I, I think an A is, is, is pretty much kind of a given. Yeah, I went I went A- minus here. Um, sure. I, I had put B, but I scratched that out because I had to remember that we weren't grading the postseason. Right. And so that shows you how much I thought of his postseason. Yeah, that's fair. But, um, yeah, A minus for him, and as you said, he just demolished uh, expectations heading into an RFA year and thirty three goals. I mean, we don't sit here and get to talk about thirty goal scores on the Minnesota Wild often, and <laughs> you know we had two guys go over thirty this year, and what a day! Yeah, so uh, that's that's pretty good. Well, there you go. We made it through player grades and we didn't take two hours to go through all of them like we could have so we also didn't include um a a couple of notable players that were moved from the team during the season i don't know if you wanted to touch on them at all or were they all f's yeah i mean i I mean i think uh, riley Riley and quincy yeah i mean quincy's an easy f and mike riley is He's kind of a D for me, but, you know, you look at what he's doing in Montreal, and hey, good for him, but he was never going to get up the depth chart here. So right. he needed that new start, but still just a, a D in the the time he played here. And I'd probably give a D to Chris Stewart as well, who was waived in February. So Right. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with those. So, yeah, there you go. There's... There's the player grades. Uh, feel free to at us on Twitter uh, with your agreements or disagreements, which I'm sure many of you will disagree with on some of that. But Come at me, bro. Yeah. I'm sure the common one that we'll get added about is Matt Dumba. So. Bring it. All right. Since there was no Minnesota Wild news besides the ongoing general manager search, we move on to the NHL playoffs. Uh, just kind of a, I guess, just kind of keeping up with it and where we're at. And here we're game two of the East final, uh, Washington, Tampa. And we got game one was Saturday night between Winnipeg and Vegas. Mm-hmm. We finished our weekly wager a few weeks ago, tied at two, I believe. So Yes, we did. The, the Purds imploded in game seven thanks to a craptacular performance from Pecorino. <laughs> uh, but Vegas man what a what a ride they're on they're your team of course your your backup team uh-huh. and then 
we hit on the the Caps defeating Pittsburgh earlier, and it, I feel bad for Tampa Bay because they kind of blew through the Bruins in round two. They get to the East final, and this is a team that was you know President's Trophy leaders for seventy five percent of the year. Yeah. And now here they are in the East final, and nobody is really talking about them. You know, yeah. everyone's talking about Washington finally getting out of round two. You know, people are f- talking about Winnipeg just, you know, becoming this juggernaut uh, after missing the playoffs last year. And and then there's Vegas, the Cinderella story. Yep. And Tampa Bay flying under the radar, but since Washington's my backup team, I'll be glad if they never get onto the radar. <laughs> Yeah, I think Andre Vasilevsky has kind of held them back a little bit, to be honest. I think that they, the matchups they have haven't been overly tough. Um, and as we're watching right now, it's the second intermission. The Capitals are up 4-2, to two, so they'll be up two rip in the series if that holds. Um, yeah, I just think that they're, you know, I think Tampa's kind of wrong place, wrong time for a, for a team that, like as you said, is otherwise very good. Yeah, I that would be in something if Tampa falls too rip to Washington after the first two games at home. But yeah, look back to round one when the Washington Capitals lost the first two games at home against Columbus, and True. They, they turned out well. So, well, and so we didn't do picks for these ones before the series started. But yeah, I don't. My answers haven't changed. Have yours changed based on the first two games? Well, obviously, I was picking Washington and. Right. I was uh, I was going with Vegas and. Oh really? In the, the West final. Okay. Um, you know, kind of my mind, I thought I, I think I can see Vegas in six. Wow. Um, okay. But I would actually go with the Jets. I I would have taken Washington as well. Just I, I'm hesitant to because I don't want to jinx them, but I, I I think that they're just kind of uh, on this destiny track now. Um, but I, I would take the Jets over Vegas. I mean, that, you know, from what we've seen from the Jets, I just, like, how do you beat that team? What's wrong with you? You're picking against your backup. You can't do that. I said I don't want to jinx it. I'm jinxing your team instead. Oh, whatever. <laughs> uh, any other NHL playoff thoughts before we uh, wrap this up? Um, you know, I, I think it's... It's gonna. It's turning out to be a pretty decent playoffs. I feel like. I think the first round kind of sucked, and everyone acknowledged that. Um, but I felt the second round was awesome, as as kind of a lot of people thought it would be as well. Um, and so, you know, usually the conference finals are are pretty solid. Uh, I'm I'm hoping that they are going to be pretty solid, but I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Oh. All right, uh, that can probably wrap it up for us. Any final thoughts? Uh, you know, I I got nothing really. Um, I'm looking forward to this GM hire, uh, as we all are. I'm looking forward to kind of getting on with the wild off offseason uh, because I think there's a lot of work to do with this team, and, and I think that it's going to be exciting to see the new GM you know, what their first moves are, what what he says. I mean, that press conference is going to be uh, kind of appointment, appointment watching. And uh, I think what he does is going to be obviously more important uh, leading up to and through the draft and the free agency. So it's going to be very fun, uh, I would say, you know, six weeks, month to six weeks here um, for Wild fans. All right. All right. Uh, final thought is, yeah, whatever. There's nothing. I'm. <laughs> this... Also, to hell with pollen. Yeah, to, I would... to hell with it. I couldn't quite formulate a joke at the beginning with the sniffles. Oh so my I... god! I'm. Oh, it is just destroying my face. I mean, there wasn't much there to begin with. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't need any help with looking worse giles that's my point roz roz would probably appreciate that too oh she would yeah she'd love it Uh, um all right that can do it for us 
All right, you can follow Ben and I on Twitter at Ben Remington at Giles Farrell. Uh, podcast has a Twitter at G A T G Wild Podcast. Uh, ben and I write for a website called Zone Coverage. You can follow them on Twitter at Zone Coverage MN or go to zonecoverage.com. Check us out there, zonecoverage.com slash wild. If I ever get back to writing one of these days. <laughs> Uh, you can find this otherwise fine production via iTunes. Uh, please leave us an iTunes rating if you subscribe to us via that platform. Also, if you do listen to podcasts via iTunes, uh, do subscribe. helps boost our show. Uh, find us on SoundCloud. Subscribe there. We have a YouTube channel. Check us out. Uh, subscribe there. Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio. We're there as well. Uh, so do subscribe however you listen. Uh, we are pretty much on any platform. So that can wrap it up for us, and hopefully we will be back next week with a more newsworthy week of the Giles Nicolay podcast. Yes, sir. Later. It's not resiliency. You're making it sound like we're good. That's all. I'm done.